I'm Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church, Tornado, West Virginia, coming to you with a devotion entitled, If You Could Do Only One Thing. So we would take a step in the right direction and resolve to spend more time with family, exercise more, read more, eat healthier, continue our education, do more for the community, find a cause to defend, take up a new hobby, enjoy the outdoors more, travel to places we've never been, tell someone we love them. There, be, there are many, many things we could do with the remaining time we have left in this life. But if we were to narrow it down, all down, if we were to do only one thing, and concentrate on it for the rest of our lives, what should that one thing be? And when it's all said and done, wouldn't you like to have the peace and sense of satisfaction that comes from knowing you chose the right thing? And what would you think if I were to tell you that by doing so, just one certain thing, all the other important things in life would naturally start to fall in line. What is this one thing? The answer is found in the Bible. In Colossians 4 and 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. We should make prayer our main priority. Devote yourselves to prayer. The word devote is also translated as to adhere to, to persist in, or to busy oneself with. When I learned that devote means busy yourself, I asked myself a series of questions to see if this was true of me, to see if I was really devoted to prayer. But I'm certain that some of you, like me, would have to say no. I haven't really devoted myself to prayer in the sense that I could say I have busied myself by talking to God. If no, you haven't been devoted to prayer, why after all these years should you change now? If you're currently not devoted to prayer, why should you be? Well, I looked through up many passages in the Bible in search of an answer to why people should be devoted to prayer or why people should busy themselves with prayer. And here's what I found. Why be devoted to prayer? Seven reasons. One, because it's our duty as Christians. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, Romans 12:12, 12, 12. 1 Thessalonians 5:17. Pray without ceasing. So, reason number one would be devoted to prayer is because God says so. It's our duty. It's expected of us as Christians. Number two, because we are promised that God hears. This isn't some pointless activity. We are promised that when we talk to God, He actually listens. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Psalms 34 and 17. A pretty good reason to be devoted to prayer, huh? Number three, because we need to hear from God. Not only does God hear us, we need to hear from Him. Psalms 38, 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. Sometimes we might forget that prayer is a two-way conversation or communication. It's as much about listening as it is about talking. God promises to answer our prayers. Life would be pretty lonely if we didn't have the reassurance that we could hear from God in response to prayer. We need to hear from Him. Prayer is a channel to hear. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, pray, Watch for answers. Thank God when the answers appear. Number four, because we need strength in temptation. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. First Corinthians ten thirteen. A great reason to be devoted to prayer is to learn that way out. Remember, we hear from God in response to prayer. If we ask, he'll show us how to steer clear from giving in to sin. If you're in a non-residential building that catches fire, you need to find a way out. Fortunately, for you there are lighted exit signs in places clearly pointing the way to safety. Once you see the sign, you have a choice. You take the way out or you take your chances. Number five, because we need to overcome our own wills. The night before Jesus was put to death, he prayed in the Garden of Eden, Gethsemane, I mean. He said, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. But in the end, he still wanted God's will to be done. So in Matthew 26, 39, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And how did he ensure that God's will would be done? By praying, taking every decision to God in prayer, greatly increasing the likelihood of God's way triumphing instead of our own wills. Jesus probably didn't want to go to the cross, humanly speaking. And humanly speaking, I don't always naturally want to do the things that are truly God's will. It's not natural for me to turn the other cheek, to love my enemy to pray for my persecutors. It's not natural for me to go the second mile, to make sure the sun doesn't go down upon my anger or wrath, to love my neighbor as myself. And so I pray, looking forward to the day when my life is shaped more by his will instead of mine. Number six, because we need to help, need help for what lies ahead. Not a one of us can predict the future, but we can often see what lies just up ahead. Perhaps a surgery, a job change, a worrisome confrontation with another individual. Maybe a move is in store. A decision needs to be made regarding finances or a big choice of facing your family. The psalmist says in Psalms 25, 4 and 5, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths, lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. A great reason to be devoted to prayer. When we pray, God's direction becomes clear. And finally, number seven, because unbroken communion with God is possible. So if you want life to be different, if you want to have the peace and the sense of satisfaction that comes from doing one thing and knowing you chose the right thing, if you want to know the joy that comes from doing something you may have been omitting and seeing the hopes and the dreams for your spiritual life and communion with God become a reality, then do this one thing. Devote yourself to prayer. That's all I have for today, and I pray that you find that prayer that you like that you need, you and your family. God bless your day. In Jesus' name, I pray.